Welcome in to Science and Kirk presents the Sports Maven this Saturday. And my good buddy and sponsor and uh, Ravens, well, I'll say semi-expert. I won't call him a, a, a requested yet. But, How about uh, a super fan? All right. Super fan is a better way to put it, which I always <laughs> consider myself. That's right. Uh, Carl Science is in the house with me today. Carl, welcome in. And uh, let's get rolling we're obviously we're going to talk about the Ravens today, no Maryland game today. Uh, later on in the show, I'm going to talk about media day for Maryland basketball. And uh, very impressed with the team this year. Very, very excited. And they're kind of under the radar, not getting ranked or stuff like that. But I think that works in your favor sometimes. I really do. Because it's what happens on the court that matters. But let's get to the Ravens. Carl, I'm going to give you a chance now to assess the team as it stands right now after okay. the first six games of the year. And then I'll give you my thoughts afterwards. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to start, let's start with the offense, you know, cause why not? Um, I mean, I think it's clear that there's growing pains going on with new offense. The inconsistency has been horrific. You know, you've got a team that has started out pretty much every game pretty well offensively. Um, and then just get worse during the game and then just have been terrible in the fourth quarter, you know, which is just difficult to watch. But, I mean, they are 11th in the league overall. We've seen good things. We've seen flashes. That Pittsburgh game, to me, that should have been a breakout game for the offense. You know, you drop – they hadn't dropped a pass during the season before that Steelers game. They dropped three touchdown passes. Um now, unfortunately, that inconsistency, not necessarily the drops, but just the lack of production, followed them to London. You know, and they had the game pretty well in hand. It seemed at halftime they were definitely dominating. And then, again, second half disappointment. Second half, you know, they just don't – they're not efficient in the red zone. I mean, that's been – they've tanked. That's an and understatement. They, <laughs> they started the season out. My goodness, they were – I think they were – they scored what 16 touchdowns out of the first 20 times or or 12 out of 16. And now they're like, they can't score in the red zone. So that's, that's been disappointing. Zay flowers, I think is a bright spot. Um, and I think OBJ and Bateman and especially likely who has disappeared. I thought likely was going to be a secret weapon this year, athletic tight end like that and a Todd Munkin offense with all those other weapons around I thought likely was going to be just tearing it up. Hasn't happened. Other side of the coin, the defense. Second in the league in defense. 260, 260 yards a game. They've given up a league low of six touchdowns. They've had a league high of 24 sacks. We've seen defensive backs that we were worried about come in and play really well. You know, Brandon Stevens, Geno Stone. Geno Stone's got three interceptions. You know, You've got these three stars, in my opinion, right now, in Smith, Queen, and Matabike, just playing dominant football. And then you've got a veteran, Javi Clowney, who I think is playing great. That dude had two sacks and nine quarterback pressures last week. Van Noy has come off the street to play well. So a lot good going on for the Ravens. But, boy, do they need to tighten it up. I don't know if that's – is that a coaching thing? Is that just getting comfortable in the offense thing? You know, what do you think? I, it's I all of the above. It's all of the above. Yeah. Here's my opinion. I am very disappointed that they are not 6-0, and all right? They found ways to lose two games. Found ways. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. has been a disappointment. I mean, let's be real. Bart Scott said he's finished, okay? And – uh which caused some laughs from everybody. And we saw some of the old Odell with that 32 yard pass reception uh, last Sunday. It was a great play. And uh, the, the drops by Jay flowers against uh, Pittsburgh just totally befuddled me. All right. And I think it was four touchdown passes that were dropped. So here's the thing is Lamar. I think Lamar's playing great. That's my opinion. He hasn't proven yet that he can march the team down at the end of the game to win the game, all right, this year. He just – he had an opportunity. 
uh, against the Steelers to tie the game up. A minute 17, there's no reason you can't do it, but he didn't do it. He got strip sacked. It was a bad block by uh, maybe somebody beat Stanley. I don't remember if it was him or McCary, but it doesn't really matter who, but it's just not getting done. So it seems like the offense, like one drive, they look unbelievable, They're like a machine. And then, like you said, in the second half, what the hell happened? All right. And this third and one thing is driving me nuts. I'm telling you, it's driving me nuts. And I, I, I just don't understand, you know, why there can't be more cohesion. Here's something, Carl, I'll say to you. In that play when uh, Andrews ran across, took the snap, what was missing? Nobody pushed him. It's legal to put. Why don't we do that? That's the talk of the league is that play right now by the Eagles. And – the NFL is a copycat league. There's nothing wrong with copying. You it's had copying. Lamar could have pushed them. And, all right, Ricard? so let's, let's move Lamar out of the picture. You had yeah. Gus Edwards could have pushed them. Another another lineman could have come around. And, what the hell is going on that we don't do that? I don't get it. If I was I at the press it. conference with Harbaugh, and I might go if we don't do it again, I don't understand it. But at least this time, there's a definition, a clear picture that we are failures on fourth and one all right and Harbaugh knows it how can you not know it and what did he do four field goals inside of 30 yards but guess what happened we won the game and Carl does anybody remember how you win a game you know you you got 17 games by the end of the year you only remember what happened with the Colts it's just another number you're four and two on defense, I think the defense has been great, except it seems like every game there's a couple breakdowns. Like the uh, when they went into the, uh, what do they call it, the shotgun where the running back is back there, and yeah. Derrick Henry, all right, goes for 70 yards. I mean, you know he's going to run the ball. You know, you get you, you watch for the, for the handoff or the reverse, but you know he's going to, how did that happen? I don't know. And then all of a sudden, it just seemed like uh, until Tannehill got injured, you know, you don't know what was going to happen with that game. And point. they've been very lucky with the injuries on the other team. Very, very lucky. I, 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 I am surprised that the offense – I know we're passing the ball more than we did the last few years. You know, the balance is still good, and balance is important. But man, it looks like a Greg Roman offense. It just still does. I mean, I don't see, and I, I expected to see something more out of Miami, you know, of, of a Miami type of offense with a lot of motion, a lot of, you know. Well, uh, ba- you know, listen, listen, Bateman's I don't not get why working. we're not seeing any of that. Bateman's not working out. I mean, Beckham, Odell Beckham Jr. is not working out. And Lamar still has that four inch window to complete a pass. There's no say except for Zay Flowers, who has separation? Nobody. Right. All right. So to me, Lamar's been incredible. I think Lamar is a much better quarterback now. I really do. You look at his passes, every one it seems is on the money. Yeah, once in a while he rolls out and throws a bad pass, but that's what happens when you roll out, especially when you roll out to the left. To go to the left to throw the ball is much, much harder. When you're right-handed, they're going to the right. And it, once in a while, it shows up. But I think that he's playing great. And uh, well, I'm, I'm interested to see what, uh, what you know, what the front office does. Uh, so the trade deadline is what? October 31st of this year. Correct. It's early this year. And we've, in the last four seasons, we've picked up Peters, uh, the, uh, the, the, Yon, the guy from Maryland, um, Yannick. Yannick uh, and Gockaway. In Gawkway. And then, of course, it's a huge move for Smith. I, I'm interested to see if he goes on the offensive side of the ball this year. And tries I, to make I don't it know, but uh, we should talk about one guy who I think is playing out of his mind, and that's Patrick Queen. I mean, he oh. gets yes. criticized for not being able to cover the pass too well, but he's all over the rush. I mean, he's all over 
you know, with sacks and everything. I mean, last game, nine tackles of one sack. And credit yeah. to him for not sitting there and sulking for not being extended. All right. He he's came earning in. more and more money is what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. I mean, he was smart. He really I hope, was. I hope, it's, I hope it's with the Ravens. I hope they can find a way. And if they Obviously can't. They want to. If they Obviously can't. They want to. If they can't, he doesn't owe us anything. He's played his no. heart out. Okay. I so, I mean, I think that's great. I think the Russian game has been up and down, but like last week, uh, Gus Edwards, 16 rushes for 41 yards. That ain't going to happen. That ain't going to make you win. I'll tell you that. And, uh, but overall, you know, and, and Detroit, Raiders, Detroit, by the way, is leading the league. Well, we'll get, we'll get to the Detroit game, but right. But the running game is going to be challenging this week. You are what your record says you are. So let's get to Detroit now. Now, who one, one, the, one, one last, one last thing I want to say about the, the season recap so far is, also, we didn't mention one guy yet, which is Kyle Hamilton. Yes. Just one look in Baltimore. We love ourselves, Ed Reed. But you know what? I'm cool with another Palomalo. And this dude, Hamilton, looks like Palomalo to me. What, what do you think? Yeah, he's a hard hitter. He's a rock and roller. I think it was unjust that he got thrown out of the game. Yes, he should have gotten it. He should have been more careful on the targeting of the helmet, but he didn't do He didn't go in there with lethal intent. And that's, I think, uh, a part of the game. All right. The Lions, Jared Goff. Okay. Yeah. Last week he was 30 for 44, 353 yards and two TDs, but he was sacked three times. Remember that stat. Mm -hmm. Three and five and one, but three and zero oh away from home. Three and zero oh on the road. That's impressive. Well, you know what else is impressive? What the last the last seventeen games, the thirteen and four. Talking about golf, last seventeen games, twenty nine touchdowns, four interceptions. Yeah, no, look, everything. Lamar right now has five and three. That's not so hot. Okay, right. but. Uh, Look, the, the Lions are five and one, we're four and two. David Montgomery is questionable. Okay. That's huge. Yeah. And that's I mean, we don't know if he's going to play or not. You won't know and, until the day of the game. Uh, and their second back Gibbs, who's explosive, but he's dealing with a hamstring, so we don't know how explosive he will be. So you're gonna be. get you're probably gonna get Craig Reynolds, who ran ten times for fifteen yards. They could not complete a pass. And this guy, Amon Ross Saint what's Saint his name? Saint Brown, right? Saint Brown, right. Yeah. He's 12 catches for 124 yards last week. Kids yeah. from USC, I believe. And yeah. uh, he he's, is. He, he's been producing for the last two years at an incredibly high level. Yeah, there's no doubt. Under the radar. But now, the, but now the Lions are exploding. Now the public's taking note. They are a fun team. They are an easy team to root for, you know. But, uh, but like you said, they, they, they gave up how many sacks last week in Tampa? Three. Three? All right. That's not yeah. good. It's and not good a, because that's been a strength for us. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's been a real strength. I mean, Matt Abike has been unbelievable. And yeah. and uh Roquan and Patrick and you know, we're getting it from everybody and everybody. Uh, yeah. Yes. And uh that's scary for them. And the the talk about the Ravens, I'm happy about this game for one reason. All right. I think it's the Ravens' first real test. They're not going to dominate this game. This game will go down to the wire, most likely. It might not, though. But I will tell you one thing. I think the abandoning fourth and one stuff improves this team. Analytics should be thrown out the window with this team when you have a guy by the name of Justin Tucker on your team. Six field goals last week. All right? And unbelievably, you had an extra point block. Put six field goals. And what else do you have to say about, you know, about our team, the reliance on him? Well, he's the best kicker in the history of football. Take advantage of him. You know, there was a spell in the, in like uh, the Indianapolis game and during the Pittsburgh game where I said, maybe we should trade Justin Tucker. We don't use him. I mean, anybody could kick extra points in 40 yard field goals, you know, right. Maybe not with his consistency, but we don't use him. But then last week we used him. But what happened, Carl? You know, when it came on the road. With any way you look at it, it was a road game. Yeah, and, and, and it's, not, it's not just relying on Tucker. By relying on Tucker, you're also relying on your excellent defense. Right. 
You know, I mean, you just you just need to just pile up the points. When you get in that red zone, just take the points every time. And when you're outside the red zone, take the points with Tucker. All right, you know? it's t- it's time. I'm sure one of us will pick the Ravens. I am, but you know, it's time for your six pack, my six pack. We're going to see who's going to do better. And Carl Science, I'll give you the honor of going first. Thank you. Well, I am going to start with the Ravens and Lions. Ravens are minus three. Lamar Jackson, he's 15 and one versus the NFC. He's seven and zero versus the NFC at home. I think there's still that thing where you just, you don't see him, you know? What do they say about Tyson? Until you get punched in the face by Tyson, you don't know Tyson. And right. I think Kenny Lamar must be similar to that. But, you know, because, but, so I am going to go with the Ravens. I think all logic says go with the Lions, but it's a home game. Defense is going to come to play. I think the Lions is going to be a little little bit weak on the, on the run game, which is going to allow us to, really get to the passer and get to golf and control him. And uh, the Ravens are going to win by seven. I right, keep going. You got five okay. more to give me. Second game. I'm taking the Browns minus two and a half versus the Colts. Colts have been a nice surprise. Obviously we saw that, but that Browns defense, if you saw them play last week against the Niners, I know the Niners were down McCaffrey in the second half. I know that they were down um, one of their other big play guys, um, but that defense was incredible last week so I'm, I'm sticking with them to keep rolling defensively i'm taking the All browns right. minus and a half third um rams minus three versus steelers i'm taking the rams steelers stink cup and nakua enough said i'm taking the rams minus three uh i'm gonna take an underdog in this one uh arizona arizona getting seven and a half versus seattle um i've been watching arizona a little bit i like that quarterback dobbs and I like the, I like their toughness and their tenacity. They're keeping games close. I'm taking the seven and a half with Arizona. Uh, my fifth game, I'm taking the Buffalo Bills to rebound. I know they won their game against the Giants. The offense looked awful, but the Patriots have been and Patriots are a little bit better against the uh, Vegas last week. But I'm taking the Bills to blow them out. So Bills cool. minus nine, I'm taking. And then game number six. Look, I'm taking this bet based on my quarterback, Riley Leonard, for the Duke Blue Devils. All-American candidate, NFL draft candidate, Riley Leonard. He uh, he has a high ankle sprain from the Notre Dame game a couple weeks ago. They're going down to Florida State. They're getting 14 and a half points. I'm just, look, I'm taking this because I'm hoping that Riley Leonard's going to play. If he doesn't play, it looks real bad. But Duke plus 14 and a half. Carl, I can't believe it. It's almost a miracle that were so close in some of the games we picked. And I, I'm not going to do it. I was going to throw in Duke. I think that spread is just insane. Because I don't it's think they've got a good defense. I don't think they're going to win, but 14 and a half, you don't have to win. And I, I to me, it's ridiculous, but I won't take it now. But it's, I can't <laughs> believe you, I can't believe you did that. Okay. But, you can believe it a little bit. <laughs> all right. I guess. All right. I am going to steal one pick, and I also am going with the Ravens. Yeah, uh, I am very high on this on this game at two and a half points. Uh, it's showtime for the Lions. They come in and beat Baltimore. It's a pivotal game. It will cripple, really hurt the Ravens' season. All right, yeah. and the Lions will be projected in the one or two power position. That's the way I think. Okay, my next game, I like the Oakland. I mean the Las Vegas Raiders. At Chicago, all right, yeah. and I love that pick because I think number one, the quarterbacks probably is not playing or maybe won't play Justin Fields, but the Raiders are coming on a little bit. I like them a lot in this game. Uh, m- my next pick is going to be the Green Bay Packers in Denver. I love, like your dad once told me, I love to bet against bad teams. Yeah, and Denver is a bad, bad. team. They you are. Know, we know the story about the elephant and the ant because your dad perfected it. Here's a <laughs> game I love. The Dolphins are at Philadelphia. Woo. Tua against Jalen Hurts. Tua yeah. replaced Jalen Hurts in the championship game. You know that's laying on Jay, Jalen Hurts' mind. And uh, therefore, all right, 
I love Philadelphia this game and the fact that they lost last week and they're coming back home. And the whole city of Philadelphia is on fire right now. That's I must see go. TV. That is must see TV. Eagles. Right. And I got to go with that. You and I can't wait for that game. Uh, the Falcons mm-hmm. lay two and a half at Tampa. I like Tampa. I like Baker Mayfield on a. Uh, I just think the Falcons are up and down. I'm not in love with them. So I like Tampa in that game. And finally, uh, I'm going to stick with the best team in football, even though Christian McCaffrey might be out. And that's the 49ers laying seven in Minnesota. I just think they're too good. So here we go, Carl. You against me one on one. All right. And yes. uh we'll we'll report as to who does what next week. But uh it's interesting to see how we do, you know. But I've been pretty good taking a six pack. I really am. But I, I love, love it. I love your Duke pick. I love it. I don't love Duke, thank you. but I love the pick. <laughs> it's a great pick. Carl, thank you so much. We're out of time. Uh we'll be back in the next segment to talk about Maryland basketball media day. And uh, Carl's going to join me for a lot of basketball talk this year. But uh, Maryland Media Day, you had to be there to see it. And it was really impressive. All right, really impressive. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for the sponsorship. You're the man. And I'll see you at the game on Sunday. Go Ravens. Right, a few Thanks, minutes Bruce. here on 1300 AM The Bet with Science and Kirk presents 